In seven seconds, Money Spider are about data-driven insights. We make changes based on data, and that can't be wrong. We use Google Analytics. We use industry best practice. If you do that, you will make more money. We have some nice badges. We were 10 years old. Uh, people like us. We have our own platform, so we've tried all of this ourselves. It's not hogwash. We have all the right interfaces, and we have some nice clients. Some are in the room. Thank you for that. You don't want to know about that. You want to know about money. Let's go. Some quotes to start us off. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. We'll talk more about simplicity in a minute. E-commerce is hard. It is hard. It's a detailed business. If you're not a failed accountant or you don't have a failed accountant working for you, get one. Retail is detail. That's what it's about. It's about knowing that your best seller of the last three days is now the product on your homepage and you walk in on a Monday morning and your e-commerce manager has already made that decision based on data and they're autonomous to do so. And my favorite, the problem with, with common sense that is not common. That is classic in this room. We all are trying to get 16 data points about our customer because we're passionate about data. Ultimately, we want to match an in-stock product with a credit card with an address. That's as simple as it is, ladies and gentlemen, and we complicate it. Look at some trends over the last three years. Google. Google isn't going away. Google is over nine in 10 people still use Google as their browser. Bing is out there, but don't be distracted by it. If you happen to sell things that work in big businesses and your clients happen to be on corporate systems that are tied to Microsoft, yes, do some Bing advertising. If not, get it right on Google first. I'm going to quote a number of killer stats. These aren't from my, these are from an e-consultancy Wolfgang Digital Report from 2016. Fantastic stuff. It's free if you haven't got hold of it. If you're not signed up to eConsultancy.com, it's free. Please do so. It's a great tool. Google delivers over two-thirds of your website traffic across all your, your, your um, mediums that you use, and website revenue is 67%. It is the game in town. When did you last look at your site using a Google private browser? Um, I see some pens in the room. These slides you can get from me, or I think Lara and her team are going to send them around. Um, so just focus. There's some great takeaways. Um, 2014, everything mobile. 2015 was all about simplification. I think 2016 is do everything well. You can only spin about eight plates at one time. You need to spin about 14 to 16. How on earth do you make that happen? Um, the aggregation of marginal games. This is why we won the Tour de France. This is why we won so many medals in the last two Olympics. It's quite simply is you can't improve one thing 100%, but you can improve 100 things 1%. This is why e-commerce is detail. This is why you need to make things work in your business. You need to give people autonomy, and you need to bank and have the discipline to know the things that you've changed. I always say there aren't many magic bullets in this world because it's just hard work. There are three. We're going to talk about them today. That's what I've measured your sites on. 18 of you are doing them OK. The other 28 need to catch up. <coughs> Who is your digital customer? We talked a lot about data today. Well, for me, this is Anne. Anne is my mother-in-law. Anne has grandchildren. That makes her a tigress. She buys everything from a wow toy through to a Daymart Long John. She has an iPad. That means she's connected. That means she's dangerous. And she has a pension to die for. We're not going to have one of those. She does. This, for me, is your digital customer. If I work with any of you in the room, I get Anne to use your website. I look at what Anne does, and Anne struggles. Everything mobile. Let's talk about access. This is an iPhone. The iPhone was born on the 27th of June 2007, 10 years ago. We heard about the iPad earlier. 10 years ago. It's a scary thing. It's an amazing thing. But you need to be aware this is what are in your customers' pockets. And they are struggling to use your websites today, right now, because you haven't looked at your website and tried to buy something on your iPhone. Responsive mobile design. There's lots of debate about this. I'll be around later. We can have some good dust up and debate. Fundamentally, you need to try and do something about it. Be that with an M template, they're sort of on vogue and they're sort of not on vogue anymore. Responsive mobile design, which we feature, because therefore you have one database of product details and that will just automatically appear on different websites or the screen sizes. Uh, or apps. Apps are coming. If you haven't got an app, you probably should get one. Um, but you get one for different business reasons. So, for example, um, doo -doo 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 -doo, uh, DPD, the best fulfillment guys out there. They're most expensive, but I think they're, they're fantastic. Why? Because the in-flight log logistics, owned by French Post, who've invested in them, the in-flight logistics are phenomenal. But they were spending £200,000 a year on text messages. So they built an app. 
What that means is rather than having an hour time slot, they have a half hour time slot. So me as a customer, I get a benefit or perceived benefit. For them, they save 200,000 pounds. So look at your business. Look how technology can help you. Um, 2014 TV Christmas advert. I'm going to save time by not playing it, but this was the Argos Aliens. Don't understand that brand, but they were round and about in the pub, in the shop. I can shop from here. It was the whole idea that you could shop from your pocket, and it started the revolution. I love this slide, Mobile Evolution. I think it says it best. And actually, if it was updated, screen size would be even getting even better. This comes from a chap from Avanish Kaushik. He's a Google thought leader. He's a great blogger. There's a link in my presentation to him. He calls it the shift from communication to consumption. This is a magic bullet. This is one of three. If you've not looked at your sales of our mobile devices, you're missing out. Who's doing that for your team? In the room, well done, 83% of you, 38 out of 46 are doing this okay. Not well, okay. Are you mobile friendly? This is a Google tool and it will tell you. Um, it will tell you that it's awesome and it's all good. Killer scat stat. Mobile is now the largest traffic source of all devices, but 42% share of traffic across, sorry, 42% of traffic, but only 21% of revenue. People use their mobiles like we all do on the tube, on the train home, in the car, maybe illegally, but people are looking at things, people are researching your products. Uh, we'll come on and talk about one tick tokenization payments later, but how can you drag PayPal up the purchase cycle in your mobiles? But ultimately, this is a research tool and a purchasing tool. What are you doing about it? Everything mobile site speed. This has happened in the last 18 months. It's probably getting traction this year. And Google are now prioritizing, we think, because they don't publish the rules of the game. Thank you, Google. Google are now prioritizing SEO results based on your site speed. Do you know who you're, where you're hosted? Do you know how to increase your server speed? If you don't, find out today. Site speed, again, another free Google tool. It will tell you what's wrong with your website and how it, how it looks. But really, why it matters. For every 0.2 of a second a website can share, save off its server response time, it can spend an 8% improvement in conversion rate. Free money, ladies and gentlemen. Free money. Pay your hosting bill. A magic bullet. What do I view? I reviewed 46 websites in the room. 61% of you are OK. One of you is good. One of you is in over 80% score in this Google tool. The rest are between 50 and 70 odd. A number of you beneath that. If you don't know about this, learn about it quickly. Email, killer stat. Email delivers as much traffic as all social channels combined. We all get turned on by our social media agencies. We all get turned on by the celebrities we're associated with and how they're selling. When did we last look at our email campaign? When did we actually reinvent that? If you don't have one of these email screen grab um, on, uh, overlays on top of your website, get one. I hate them. But the stats tell me that you'll get many more free email addresses. My personal advice is you put them on second or third engagements, the second or third click on the website. Fashion brands tend to have them when you appear, and it works really well. I can't argue with the data. Subscribe for offers and exclusives. I really like this coordinates example. It's permanent. It's in the header. It doesn't go away. Rules of email sign up. Put it on every page. Incentivize it. But if you incentivize it and offer a premium prize draw, 10% off, whatever it is, fulfill on that. Deliver that. If you don't, people will slag you off social media. And make it simple. Let's not get 16 data points. Just get an email address. Just get an email address. Get someone to buy from you, and then you can start the conversation. Post sign up. Welcome them. So many systems do it automatically and for free these days. So few people do that or don't do it. Follow up if they've signed up. This is great. This is from Lyris from last year, big email house. Email opens are based on 60% of sender name, 55% preview pane, 53% the headline, 33% the subject line, 30% the image header. How much of us get fixated about the header and the subject line, or the, sorry, the image and the subject line and forget everything else? And 50% of their customers open their emails on their mobiles. Um, there are many email platforms from MailChimp upwards. Um, SendGrid, I think, one of the best, or they may have been bought. But they've got a tool that if you, I take my son swimming on a Saturday morning. I'm bored. I have my phone. It happens to be an RAF base. I happen to have 4G connection. What do I do? I look at my emails. If SendGrid noticed that I'm looking at my email on a Saturday morning at 930 
irrespective of you sending your email at Thursday, 3.30 p.m., because it's considered purchase for the weekend, after the third time of doing that, SendGrid will delay that email and deliver it at 9.45 or 9.15, depending, to my email box. How incredibly impressive is that? Now, that is a Rolls-Royce version where MailChimp still works, but there are some fantastic tools out there for you to get behind email and make it really work for you. Sorry, SendGrid, I've got that wrong. It was Silverpop. Apologies. Customer reviews. We all love a five-star review. Um, that's fantastic. But this is one of the cheapest and best things that you could do. I think when I reviewed you, there's about an 80-20 split between FIFO and Trustpilot. We know them both. I like them both. I'm agnostic. Just get some reviews. Um, reviews deliver a sales uplift of 17%. So again, free money. And if you have enriched snippets, we can get them sitting underneath your natural listing on Google, which means 30% of people are more likely to click. Free money. Why are we not doing it? Because it's too difficult? Because someone said not to do it? This is obvious. How many of us have products without reviews? OK, I get a bit contentious here. How are the reviews getting populated? How many, you know, if you've got a bestseller or you want to turn something into a bestseller, um, you know, maybe get a friend to do a review. I know that's controversial, and the, and the, and, but at the end of the day, we're about selling, and we're about making money. Um, I spoke here, I think, um, three years ago, and I, I made this, and I make things up because you do when you present, right? And, um, and I said, are, are your bestsellers, your top 10 bestsellers, are they your top 10 overstocks that you promote that much? And I won't say who, but someone in the room came up to me and go, do you know what, we do that. We turn our overstocks into our bestsellers just by presenting them so much to our customers, our customers have to buy them. So I'm not saying do that with reviews, because reviews have to be independent. But just think how people are using your site. We heard before lunch about that. Uh, we also heard about Andy from Conversant about reviews earlier. Conversant blew me away. I'm very glad I have private browsing turned on my mobile. Can I just say that? Um, because the amount of data that they're now getting about your customers. Um, 57% of you are using reviews. FIFA will cost you as little as £99 a month. To have £99 a month sitting as a five-star review on your natural listing in Google is the best money you will ever spend. If you're not doing it, I don't know why. Some brands, I speak at some high-end luxury things, we're too posh for reviews. I don't think your customers think that. Check out, let it flow. Top five reasons for basket abandonment. Hidden delivery prices. How often have we got to the checkout, bought something, and suddenly it's 15 pounds? What? You know, why do we hide that? The word from is amazing. From 595. If you've got great transactional engines, have dynamic delivery based on the weight of the basket and where it's being delivered to. We've been doing that for years. It's not difficult. You just need some clever guys to make it happen. Unnecessary pages, too much information you needed. How often have we got to the basket, we've built something, and we go off to delivery, see how much the price is, we debate it, the phone rings, and we've lost the transaction. Force registration. Not many of you are doing that, fortunately, but it was a real fan. I think there were some marketing directors and apologies to the ones in the room who really wanted forced registration to collect the data points. I've lost that argument once in 10 years. I'm very happy to have it with you. If you use all of the data points you collect, I apologize. Most of us do not. 15% of users leave if they're forced to register. So you've done the hard bit. You've done the email. You've done the Google. You've driven traffic. They've come to your site. They found a product in stock. They found it in color. They found it in their size. They put it in the basket, and then you force them to register. Make it easy. Unclear navigation, too many calls to action. Redirects. Some sites, not many, still take us to the bank to pay for our groceries. Slightly confusing. This is Bodhi Fu, one of our clients. When we picked them up two or three years ago now, they had a seven-stage checkout process. Seven stages. It's a wonder they sold anything. So we put a simple shopping basket, a simple first page. Do you know what the key thing is? The image of the product in the order summary. So simple, and yet it absolutely works and an embedded PCI secure form from SagePay here uh, via an iframe. It's really ugly. We can do nothing about it. Other payment solution providers have things like transparent redirects so you can keep more of your brand, but it's absolutely key. Simple, clear, new checkout, increase their conversion rate by 50%. Thank you very much. Uh, one click. He said clicking once. Oh, we're going to the game. SagePay tell us of our merchants lose 28% 20 of their shoppers on their payment pages. Uh, this was a e-cigarettes brand who were a bit fly by night, but they were selling things online, and we put in a 
one click order process. Uh, and we increased conversion rates by 40%. I went to a conference and I think the fashion brand All Saints were there. And they described putting Amazon one click into their basket as drinking from the fire hose. It made that much of a difference. There is some confusion over the Amazon one click in terms of where does the money go, where does the customer details go, and you need to nail that down. And let me tell you, working with Amazon is difficult because they go, we're Amazon, you're not, work how we want to work. And knowing some of the characters in the room, that's not great, but this is coming. And I think this combined with mobile, um, you know, these guys gave us a challenge saying, my customers are going to be drunk, they want to eat cigarettes for the weekend, and you've got four clicks, make it happen on their mobile device. But it can be done. PayPal are really doing some great stuff here, but it's really something to consider. Tokenization through SagePay or Verifone is now the same cost as what you're currently paying. So it's something just to consider and maybe you know, sketch out whether it be this Christmas or next within a secure account environment. Abandoned baskets. Again, more free money. This is Doris. I was watching uh, about last November. I think I was watching Lewis on ITV4. And I don't really watch the adverts because I have Sky and I fast forward it, don't we all? Suddenly this lady came out and I thought, what's this? I fell off my sofa with my two boys. Here's a two minute TV advert from Barclays Digital Eels telling us about when you go to a website, don't buy, just wait. They'll often send you an email with a better offer. Oh my word, Doris is telling me about what I tell people to do. And yet they're educating the world. Thanks Barclays Digital Eels, not a great thing. But ultimately you've got to be aware of that. You've got to get into it. Whether we like abandoned baskets, whether we like abandoned brows that some people sell, I'm sure Converse will be selling that. It is amazing, it is big brother, but it works. It makes you more money. A magic bullet, um, some pretty simple abandoned basket emails. But the stats are discipline program put in place leads to an additional 8% online sales per annum. So that's 80,000 pounds if you turn over a million pounds online. Right, just from having some discipline. Your platform provider might do it for you. You can certainly hook up with a couple of good agencies that I know who will do it. I'm sure Conversant will do it. If they don't already, I'd be surprised. But really what I favour in your low season, let's say February to October, do it yourself. Get someone keen in the warehouse to do it because you get the best voice of the customer you'll ever get by saying, I saw you were trying to buy this. Did you have a problem? What can you learn? Thank you very much for your feedback. Have 10% off. Um, and it's really about resources. You either pay an agency to do it, or you do it yourself, you find some time. But it's a magic bullet, and it's free money. Google PPC brand protection. I will take Martin's challenge of PPC not working for his brand. Um, this is a Dena Cashmere. They're a customer, and you search for them. And Pure Collection are brand squatting. Squatting on their brand. It'll be happening to you all today. Really, because someone has told you brand PPC doesn't make you money. Correct. It may or may not. So it may make more money than product PPC, but it pushes you down the page if you're not doing it. And I've flip-flopped my advice on this, and by the way, in 10 years. And certainly on mobile de devices, the size of these adverts is disproportionate. So you're losing space. I see some nodding heads. Good. We've got some agreement in the room. This might cost you 40 quid a month, but you'd be silly not to be doing it. Um, and yeah, so protect brand listing by bidding on own brand terms. On-site search. This is one of my pet hates. How many dead ends do we have? If you find a search result called condom on your website, it's probably me, because that's what I use to find and try and find a dead end search. We get a dead end search. It just means I've got nowhere to go. I might as well go back to Google, right? Because it's easier. This is Serious Readers, one of my clients, but at least they give you somewhere off. You know, some of our best sellers, these are what people have been looking at today. We couldn't find that. Are you interested in this? Just give me an avenue. Best selling products so as avoid dead end searches. How many of you know your Pareto 80-20? How many of you, your 20 products are driving 80% of your revenue? You should be hugging those products. You should be spamming those products all over your website. And lastly, I think I'm way under time, but that's good because I talk fast. Again, Alvinus Kowalczyk again. For every £10 spent setting up your measures and analytics, spend another 90 on getting insights. Ask the so what question, or the so bleep what question, as I always put it. You have all this discipline, you measure everything, but you don't do anything about it, and it frustrates me. Thank you very much. Right, just to finish, three things to start today. Not, I might get to it, but today. Money, today, this evening, make phone calls in the next break. All magic bullets. Improve your site speed. Who runs your server farm? How are you going to do that? What's it going to cost you? What's the disproportionate cost? What's your return on investment? Understand that. Add reviews and abandoned basket engines. 
They're simple, they're free, you can do it yourself. Your web platform might even do it, you may not even ask the, the, ask the question. And lastly, and most important, call your mother-in-law. Great, many thanks for your time. <laughs>